What's good, Craig Gang? We're here today, you know, on the trap line right now, and it is snowing in Kentucky. Okay, it's not snowing much, like, you know, you get like a flake every now and again, but there is a little bit of snow on the ground, and it is enough to say it's snowing. But we're actually at the first snare we set of the year, and bro, we had something last night. Now, is the critter we caught still here? No, he's long gone. We definitely caught one. One, because, well, if you look right there, you do see some kind of hair. Now, I'm pretty sure, I'm not exactly sure, but... You know what? Hey, let's examine that a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see that hair enough, but... You know, it's right there, right there in my hand. I'm gonna make the guess that that was a cow. However, this right here is a swivel, you know, where it connects to the fence. As you can see, well, he's gone. Whatever animal was here... He gone, son. He gone. Now, why did he get away? Well, there's really only one explanation. That was one of the snares I made myself. I didn't buy that. I made it, and I guess I didn't do a good job. Which, as you can see, I mean, that was one of my homemade swivels. Now, that's that that means that that's one of my old ones that I said. That's actually one of the first snares I've ever made. So, you know, I did a pretty bad job on it. Let's just say that. But anyways, guys, I've done checked all the other traps. We don't have nothing yet. But as of right now, I've actually got this right here. It's a big salt block right here. Now, it says it's by Mossy Oak and everything you know i don't know but we're gonna set it out we're gonna set it out where the corn pile is there's actually no corn right there which is a big problem so instead of corn i'm gonna try out this mineral block and see if we can get them coming into that so guys here we are now this is you know where the corn pile was we're gonna set out that salt block right there and i believe even maybe this evening i may head on over to you know the farm store or whatever and get some corn because as y'all know season is definitely ticking down to kill a deer and i ain't killed one yet and I will say, I want to kill one, okay? Like, I just want to kill a deer. I don't even care if it's a buck anymore. I just want to kill a deer. But, you know, hopefully this salt block right here may just, you know, change my luck. Maybe we can get some pretty good deer. Maybe a big old doe, hopefully, to come into this salt block regularly. And, you know, we can sit up there in that tree and shoot them down with a bow, you know? But, yeah, I'm just going to dump out the salt block, you know, put it right there because... Well, there's nowhere else to really put it but on the ground, but hey, that should be good. We may come back this evening and put a little corn out. I'm not exactly sure yet. But if there's one thing for sure, I need all the help I can get if I'm going to kill a deer this year. Okay, guys, so right now we're about to do something, you know, pretty dang awesome, okay? Right here in my hand, I have a 38 Special Revolver Pistol. Now, this here, this is, you know, like I just said, a Smith & Wesson 38 Special. Now, this gun right here, it is a five-shot revolver. It's got a two-inch stub nose barrel, so, you know... We ain't got much range on it, but she should still do some damage. What we're going to be shooting out of is just, you know, just some plain old Remington 38 special rounds. They're not going to be hollow point or anything. They're going to be solid point. That way, you know, well, we should get some pretty good damage on them. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot this box. We're going to empty the little, you know, cylinder right there. I about said empty the magazine, but, you know, on a revolver, well... There's not much of a magazine. It's just a cylinder right here. But we're going to put five rounds right here on this box. This is actually a shoot and see target that one of you guys, the Grey Gangsters, sent in. So whoever sent this in, thanks a lot because we are definitely putting it to use today. But we're going to put our five best shots right here and see what kind of groupings we are. Now we're going to stand back. We're going to walk back a little bit. But we're actually going to, you know, shoot from about maybe 20 yards, 10 yards, something like that. We're just going to come over here. We got a good old backstop back there. If a bullet goes into that, it ain't going nowhere. So it's straight into the dirt. So I'm just going to set the box right there. We're going to back up a little bit and then we're going to take our five best shots and so guys these right here these are the bullets i'm using like i said these are just remington nothing special these are honestly like the cheapest ones they can get which even though this is the cheapest bullet you can get for a 38 special it still ain't cheap okay it's still like it's it's pretty well up there okay in price range but anyways if you're not familiar with how you load a revolver here's how to do it okay so first thing to know is on your regular pistols as some would say a semi-automatic it's got a clip that comes out of the handle you'll pull that out put it in the clip put it back and rack it these are a lot different. What you're going to do is you push out the cylinder, like I'm uh, this right there, and it's got like, you know, every how many holes it, ho it takes. What you all got to do is you put one in each hole. Not nothing special, I mean, hey, boys, you just load it. In this revolver's case, you know, it, it holds five rounds, so you're going to put fi five in there. I actually have a 22 revolver, and guys, it holds nine shots, and that that is a lot of shots, for, especially for a revolver. But we're about to put five shots out there on that box. First things first, you got to have some earring protection right here in my pocket. I do have some eye protection. Before I shoot these shots, I just want to ask y'all, like, if y'all are not subscribed, go do that right now and smash the like button while you're at it. Because if we can get, like, an amazing amount likes like over 8,000 I'll do a whole lot more of these gun videos because like I know I've not done a gun video I've not done a shooting video in quite a long time and you know if we can get a whole lot of likes on those videos I may do like one every two weeks or maybe even one a week if you like it we may do a little segment like this if y'all hit the like button like smash it we may do a gun shooting segment like once a week no doubt but anyways here we go targets right there we're gonna empty the cylinder or whatever you want to call it 
But anyways, here we go. Now with this revolver here, this is what you call a double action. That means you can either pull back the hammer and shoot it like this first shot right here. Or what you can do is, you know, you don't have to pull it back. You just pull the trigger back and it cocks itself like this. Now that we've got, you know, the single action and the double action out of the way, I'm just going to empty this thing. Here we go. Oh, that's good in there. I almost hit the orange part. And I believe that's it. Yep, that's it. Okay. And then here's the cool part. If you want to eject the shells, you do this. Well, I mean, you get the point. They fall out once in a while. Now, these Smith & Wesson 38 Specials, they are, like, notorious for being loud, okay? And, you know, like today, I was wearing ear protection. But I actually have shot it without ear protection before. And, you know, then I decided, hey, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad thing to, you know, hear what my kids are saying whenever I got older. So, like I said, I wear ear protection. But anyways, let's head on up to the target. Honestly, I shot five shots at it. I only see three bullet holes, which is not a good thing at all. And sure enough, I only hit it three times. There was my first shot. There was my second shot. The third shot, I don't know where it went, but that fourth shot right there where I said, oh, I got pretty close, that right there, that's where that was. And then, you know, the fifth shot, shoot far, son, it's long gone. I probably hit up there or something. And as some of you guys, you know, also may know, is that the two-inch stub nose barrel, well, that doesn't help its accuracy either. And so, guys, this right here, this is actually our next target. Now, if you're wondering what that is, that is a big block of ice. And to be completely honest, it's like peanuts drinking water from yesterday. It started out as peanuts drinking water yesterday, essential for life. And this morning, with zero degree temperatures last night, well, it's our next target. But anyways, this should be interesting, because by no means, that's at least four inches thick right there. Like that, that's a big piece of ice. However, a 38 Special is a pretty big bullet. And we're going to... My predictions is that, yeah, it's just going to shatter. But then again, you really never know until you try it. What I want you guys to do right now is go down in the comments and say, yes, I think it'll shatter it, or no, I think it'll stop it. And just keep in mind that a 22 caliber, the caliber that I usually shoot at squirrels and stuff, that would only make a small chip in it. A 22 would not bust it. However, like I said, we ain't using no 22 anymore. But anyway, here we go. I'm only going to load it one time because I'm fairly faithful. I can hit it. Here we go. I'm going to zoom y'all in. That way, you know, you can see what happened. Okay, here we go. On three, two, one. You're kidding me, boys. I missed it. I'm not exactly the best sharpshooter ever lived, but here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, boys. Shattered. Now, I'll be completely honest. That's exactly what I was expecting, okay? Shattered it, no problemo. But to just give y'all a little idea, I'm going to stomp this right there as hard as I can. Ah! Uh! 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 And it's not breaking. It ain't even cracked right there. So that is by no means, that's not a soft piece of ice, guys. That's four inches thick. However, shooting that block of ice, I will say that was really fun. And so, well, Sheba's water froze last night too. But I will say, Sheba's water... Sheba's water is at least five inches thick. Now, that's an added inch, and an added inch of ice, well, that's a lot of more protection. But anyways, we're going to do the same exact thing, see what happens, but I'm actually going to put this camera a whole lot closer to the ice. I'm going to zoom y'all in a little bit right here, and then, well, I'm going to count down, then I'm just going to blast it. Okay, there you go. I'm backing up, and then I'm just going to pop it. All right, boys, here we go in three, two, one. Dang it, I missed it again. And I mean, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I'm not going to blame it 100% on the gun because it's definitely a little bit of the shooters. I mean, I can't feel my fingers. You're kidding me, boys. I just missed it again. But I did shave the top, which is getting close. I believe I may be flinching a little bit too, though. There we go, but we still got a pretty big piece left right there. Okay, I believe that done it in. But here we go for kick. That took me eight bullets, guys. That took me eight bullets. I'm not gonna lie, guys. That was not, that was definitely one of the hardest targets I've ever had to hit in my life. Forget the fox squirrels. That piece of ice was hard to hit, okay? Like he must have had some thermal camo, people. I couldn't even see it. But speaking of hitting targets, let's go check those trail cameras. Okay, Grey Gang, it is actually the next day from yesterday. So this salt block here, it had actually been out one day. And so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna check this camera, you know. You know, why not? Well, there's also the trail camera over the hill a little bit that had those rabbits in front of. 
one of it. We're gonna check that too because you know the rabbits are gone now. But anyways, what we are gonna do is we are gonna check the cameras today and see if we get anything, you know, any cool pictures or something cool. Okay, so here we go. We're just gonna flip through them rapid fire. If I see anything awesome, I'll let you know for sure. Okay, well, you know, hey, there's a doe. Not a big doe. Actually, the one that's about the size of a dog, but hey, it's still a deer. Hey, right there's a picture of a small buck, nothing big. Right here on this next picture, you can actually see some snow. See those streaks? That is snow. So listen, guys, I did not lie to you. It did actually snow at one point in time. And then, you know, there's a little doe after the snow. Right there, there's that other doe, the same one that's about the size of a dog. Hey, there we go. We got at least three deer out there. One, two, three. And there may even be some more over here that, you know, the camera just didn't see. But that is definitely a good sign right there. Right there, you know, we got two more deer. Actually, pretty big size, too. Not gonna lie. So, you know, guys, there's that camera. We did get one buck. I will say that. And multiple does. Which, the next time I go deer hunt, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm gonna kill a doe if it walks out. But as of right now, we're actually gonna head over the mountain a little bit, across, you know, the timber a little bit, and we're gonna check that camera where we put rabbits in front of it. Now, this morning, I did drive by the trail camera, and I could definitely see that, you know, the rabbits were gone. So we 100% have something on camera, okay? So here we are. We're at the scene of where I put those rabbits. I put them right there. As you can see, they're gone, which means something ate them. So let's take a look and see what it was the murderer of the rabbito and the possums. Because, you know, the possums, well, they got rent too. We've only got 18 pictures, which means right through here somewhere, we should definitely... Okay, I see something right there. I can't tell for sure. I'm going to zoom into it a little bit. I actually see a squirrel. Um, okay, so this is actually the first video with some action in it. And we do have a squirrel right there checking out the rabbits. I don't know what he's doing, but I mean, hey, we'll let him have it, I guess. Nothing yet. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, guys, nothing much. Just seems to be a squirrel. Here we got a doggy. That's Sheba. Sheba, what are you doing? There's no way. Sheba. Sheba, no. Sheba. Sheba's the murderer. Sheba. Where are you at? I honestly hate to say it, people. We looked through every single one of those videos right there. The rabbits are gone, and we only got two critters the whole time. One, a little gray squirrel, which I have a hard time imagining, ate two full-size rabbits, and two, we have Sheba. Sheba, are you the killer? I said, are you the killer? Answer me, Sheba, answer me. But for real, dog, are you the killer? I'll take that as a yes. Okay, she's not saying much. I'm going to take that as a yes. Sheba is the killer. Okay, Greg, and we're back in the basement now, and it, like, you know, it's a Saturday. It's time for the verse of the week, and now I'm looking at my hands, and I'm wondering how do I get blue stuff on my hands. I don't even know, but anyways, here we go. The name of this week's little lesson thing, it's called The Benefit of the Doubt. Now, the verses we're going to be looking at this week actually come from, like, the very beginning of Matthew. As you can see right here on this screenshot, it's nothing but a bunch of names. Each one of those names actually represents an individual generation. And as the list of generations go on, that's, like, sort of heading, you know, pointing towards the end of humanity, a dead end. Like, I'm just going to say, like, those generations... They were far from God. I'm talking you know, like they were bad off people. They were in bad shape. They were about rare, I'll tell you that. What I thought about is you know how like if you're a big Star Wars fan, whenever it Order 66 and like all the Jedi's are like going and they're like they're all dying and there's just a few left. Well, that's how the true Christians are. There's only a few left and everybody else is like trying to against them and everything. So at the beginning of Matthew, it seems like humanity is coming to a dead end. However, if you know what I'm going to, and Jesus is born, and Jesus Boys, that's a good thing, okay? When Jesus was born, that marked a new beginning. It went from extreme doubt to hope is everywhere. It went from a dead end to a new beginning. And just like that happened back in then with Jesus, that can actually happen in our life. If you're feeling like you're as low as you've ever been, if you're feeling like you're so far from God that you just don't know what to do, that's okay because just like all those generations in Matthew, in the beginning of Matthew, they were as bad as they could get. It was literally looking like it was going to be a dead end and everybody was going to die. But just like we just saw, Jesus was born and that started a new beginning. So just like in your life, even though you may may see a dead end. A dead end is the perfect place for a new beginning. So just keep that in mind. It is never 
too late to just start over. Just clean your state slate and just start over. But anyways, if that helped you at all, like I say this like every Saturday, but please, I'm for real about this. Tell me in the comments. Last video, we just released some pop sockets, baby. We released these right here, the Predator. These were special to January, and these are actually very limited edition. So here are the pop sockets, but don't worry. We've also got these right here. This is the original SSOG pop sockets that were released in December, but they actually sold out in a day, which was amazing. And hey, while you're at it, like it's cold outside, Go get you a long sleeve shirt and don't freeze to death with a short sleeve. But I just really want you to know this. Just because, like, I am plugging my merch and everything, I don't want that to take away from the message whatsoever. So, if you want to watch the message again, I honestly, you should you can just back it up and watch it again because that, that's a really important one. Out of all the verse of the weeks I've ever done, that one, that one's right up there. Like, that's one of my favorites, no doubt. But until Monday, I'll see you later, my people. Boom. If you're not part of the Grey Gang, go ahead and subscribe by hitting the button on the top right and feel free to watch some of my past videos on the left. As always, Favorite Squad, post it up down low. If you want some of this sweet merch, head on over to kennelgray1.com or the link in the description. But besides that, I'll catch you later in tomorrow's video.